Fair, shared and sustainable open access for all. That's not much to ask for, is it? it it's, it's a bizarre state of affairs. We were, as a people, far more connected to our waterways than we are now. Our access to them has never been worse. Only 4% of our waterways here in the UK have public access to them. And that's just not fair. That's just crazy. You know, 96% of it is shut off to people like me who really, really care. There's a strong sense from people that actually this is fundamentally wrong that people should have the same rights that we do to mountains and moors to enjoy those open spaces, that actually, well, why can we only access 4%? These rivers and canals and, and lakes are all over our country and within reach of, of so much of the population, yet so little can actually be, be enjoyed. A couple of years ago, I was paddling on the Derwent down at a place called Watts Stanwell, and we were just getting changed, and a guy pulled up uh, and he confronted us. He said, you can't go kayaking here. You know, you're just not allowed there. There's fishermen, it's very dangerous. We go very quick and we might knock a fisherman over. Well, he was actually almost bullying us not to be there and he had no right whatsoever to do that. I've certainly experienced and I've, and I've seen other people experience a full range of things. Everything from verbal abuse to threats of violence, being actually chased down the river. Yeah, actually people driving cars and running down the side of the river um, to try and shoe paddlers off, uh, leaving like tacks and drawing pins in, in the car park to puncture tires, all, all sorts, anything you could think of to actually restrict people trying to get on the water. I've been to rivers that have had barbed wire strung across them. I've had full cans of lager chucked at my head while I've been paddling. I've even had anglers deliberately cast their hooks at me and try and uh, tug me into the water. So I've seen firsthand the conflicts that can occur and I'd love to find a solution to that. You could stop the harassment, or if you like, give yourselves the validity to stop the harassment by recognising the right of navigation on all rivers. We can actually trace the right of navigation right back to Roman times. So there's no question in our minds, it's all there, it's all there in statutes. Nobody's produced the statute to repeal it. And I think for the government just to recognise that, then they can say, well, look, these people are entitled to be doing what they're doing. You can't keep on harassing them. The, the position on access in, in rivers has been unclear for some time and different parties have different views. And we think the time's right now for us all to share the same view. The, the reality is the lack of clarity has led to conflict. Conflict appears, happens on rivers and fishermen and, and anglers and, and swimmers and canoes and paddlers uh, find themselves in dis disagreement and we, th we think it's time for change. We also know that new people coming into canoeing and paddle sport find the position very unclear and confusing. So let's take the opportunity to make it really clear, to clarify the position and to show and that everybody can have open and fair and shared access on rivers. Rivers are just the life of the land, you know, they, they formed it, but they are kind of these corridors of wildlife. The more people kind of can access the rivers, and learn about them as well. I think that's kind of one of the things, because you do learn about the water when you're canoeing. I think the disconnect that we, we're starting to see with people in the natural environment, where more and more people are spending their time in urban environments and, and, and not enjoying these natural spaces, whether, whether that's because they don't feel like they have access to it or, or what. But it's, it's very dangerous because it sets a precedent for future generations. And, and our future generations are the people who are going to be the custodians of, of the rivers and the mountains and the moors. And it's important that they actually understand what it's like to experience those places. People protect what they love, but they only love what they know. So if people are connected to these environments, they're going to want to protect them, but they're also going to see the threats that they're facing. So at the minute, I think with plastic pollution, it's oftentimes seen as a very coastal problem, either a coastal or out in the, in the big wide ocean problem. But it's not. 80% of it's coming from inland. Yeah, the canoeists are the bin men of the rivers. We do go and collect stuff all the time because you can't help yourself. But there are so many canoeing groups at the moment who are doing river cleanups. If you read what they've done, they've travelled two or three miles on a river and taken out literally bucket loads of stuff. The way that you protect environments is by having the maximum amount of willing custodians who are just ready to lend a hand and get stuck in. But you have to invest people in the health of, of a river in order to have them interested. And you don't do that by shutting them out. It is well documented 
that access to the outdoors is good for well-being, access to waterside even more so, or on the water. You do need to consider the entire public in this, not just what sort of boat you paddle, what sort of sport you do. It's not a matter of that, it's got to be the public. I think for me, being on the water is is freedom. It's 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 a release of you know everyday stresses and strains. Um, you know, I feel able-bodied in my boat, to be honest, as I'm paddling along. And I think access is even more important for people that may have disabilities or mobility issues. You know, so much of your life is often constrained by what you can and can't do in the wheelchair or what you can and can't reach in the shops. So to be able to get out of your chair and to be able to get into a boat um, and experience the freedom of being on the water is just an incredibly positive thing, both for yourself and for your life. Getting on the waters great for people and we see it all the time we hear the case studies we see the evidence that just to get out helps with mental health it helps with physical well-being and the more people that can do it and the more often they can do it obviously is contributing not only to the strategy but also to the wider government strategy of health and well-being and we want more people more active on on the waterways and that's why this piece of work is so very important so this country now is in the midst of an obesity epidemic. We have uh, diabetes massively on the rise, uh, all kinds of, of problems for young people, many of which can be solved through exercise and for being outdoors. But if they don't have a waterway near them that is open to use, then it's not possible. Think about what we could achieve. Think about all that, you know, pretty much for nothing we could give to our young people and all of the problems in our society, that could solve. And just please, please, please throw yourselves behind this. The situation isn't going to get any better if we maintain the status quo. It's really important now that for future generations, this is a gift that we can give them, that my children and their children know that they are able to access the waterways to enjoy these spaces. Fair, shared and sustainable open access for all. It's time to make it happen.